My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. I'm Siwafili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, today we have a big surprise for you, and that is Mark Yaffe. Welcome to the show. It's awesome to be back. Yeah, it's been a few years. It hasn't? Yeah, I know. The time went by so fast. I was just looking at the tape the other day. I'm like, man. <laughs> that was in 2012. I thought well, I was just here like last year. So it's, it uh, seemed like last year, but I'm glad to have you back. I saw you recently at the comedy jam the Indian Health Center had. It was the 10th annual uh, Indian Health Center jam, and Vernon Medicine Cloud and the crew put on a really fun show, and it was myself, and I think we had uh, four other comics. Yeah, 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 but you were a great MC, so you kept us rolling in the aisle, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was running a little late. The show started, and the, the, the center director uh, introduced me. I was still in the bathroom, so that oh, was all, I'm glad I'm here on time. So oh, I remember that. Yeah. They kept yeah. saying your name and Mark. Come on, come on, cut it short. No. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was it was a good show, great show. So what have you been up to? Besides doing fundraisers, just out touring around. I did a. I was just in Seneca, uh, New York, at the Seneca Casino. Man, beautiful you place. You performed there. I got. To, I was like three blocks from Niagara Falls. Yeah. It was wow. awesome, yeah. They treated us great. We had a, like a one-year-old baby in the audience, and the baby didn't cry, so that was that was great. So I was really excited about that. The and, baby uh, laugh at your jokes? Well, I think the baby's just kind of going along with the crowd. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll take credit. Yeah. yeah. What, what a one-year-old can understand that my, my juvenile humor probably was understandable to the baby, but uh, did that, and uh, I shot a. Uh, a special for uh, FNX First Nations Experience uh, oh. that's going to air, I believe, in uh, uh, early 2017, all the way through, through 2020. They're going to show it like three or four really? times a year. So, yeah. Wow, that's excited cool. about that. And so, uh, did you? Are you taping shows ongoing, or did you already tape all the shows? Well, we did. We did just one hour-long oh, special. They they edited down to like 45 minutes. Uh -huh. And the same producer, uh, Ken Knoll, out of uh, Albuquerque, mm -hmm. he met. Uh, met me when I was doing a, a show at Isleta Casino about four, uh, seven years ago now. And he came up with an idea. We, we shot a pilot for that a ah. sitcom called Almost Americans. Oh. So I play a native guy teaching citizenship to new immigrants. So yeah, it should oh, be fun. That should be good. We shot the pilot and uh, we're gonna shoot the, the other episode soon. It's so myself, uh, if you're, I don't know if you're a Breaking Bad fan, it was uh, one of the guys from Breaking Bad, Stephen Michael Cazade, he played Agent ah. Gomez, he's in the show. He plays Jesus, uh, the, uh, one of the landscape guys. And then we have Harry, uh, well, Harry Singh is the character. It's Jerry Bednob, he, he was in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. He played the Mooj guy that cussed a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's yeah. in it, and a couple other friends. And well, my brother lives about a mile from the uh, Isleta Casino. Okay. So he, when I go to visit, he'd show me, oh, this was filmed here from Breaking Bad, and this was the restaurant, this happened, and all the different uh, scenes. Well, the Breaking Bad, it's, it, there's such a cult following just for that yeah. group of people. Love it. They yeah. come, people come there on vacation. Just they go to Albuquerque, <laughs> and they go to the response. car wash, yeah. and they go to the restaurant. So my friend, uh, the producer, Ken Knoll, he met these guys. Oh, yeah, we're big Breaking fa Bad fans. We're reenacting the scene. So they would actually do the dialogue. He goes, hold on. <laughs> oh, he really? calls up the Agent Gomez character, Steve Michael, because he shows up at the restaurant and goes reads the scene with them. So oh, really? How funny. Yeah. So, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in New Mexico. I send up yeah, there quite a bit. I'm going to yeah. go there in a few 
in, in a bit and do some more shows. But yeah, it's been good. So a lot you're of fun. doing mostly the uh, the Indian casino circuit, or just everywhere? some clubs? It's a, it's I'm a mix. You know, one uh -huh. one week I'm in a you know in a bar in Medford, Oregon. Then I'm in like a nice casino, and then I tour also with uh, Powell Comedy Jam. It's myself, uh, Howie Miller, and Bon Eagle Bear. It's JokeSignals.com. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's the two other guys. We just uh, we're out there in Seneca, and uh, we're putting together a. Well, we're going to do a, a like a, I'd say, what do you call it, docu-series? It's like going to be a six-part thing where we start. It's called Taking Back Manhattan. Oh, so really? In the, in the political climate now, we're going like, to start in Manhattan Beach, California. Then we go to Man There's actually Manhattan, Nevada. There's only like 100 people. Then Manhattan, uh, oh. Montana. <laughs> Manhattan, Kansas. <laughs> Manhattan, So you're going to take all these Manhattans back? And then we end up in Manhattan. There you go, we're, one goal at is a time. To shoot, huh? We're going to shoot a, try to shoot a uh, special in uh, Central Park, so we're working on... Oh, and that we'll pick up some other in native comics on the way and have showcase some of our other talented comedians you know in Indian country and uh -huh. you know hopefully we're gonna pull that together soon it's you know I was always work work in progress and you know you putting the pieces together uh, so I'm I excited. was just yeah. watching your other video the one you did with Scott oh the going native going yeah. native that was okay. so funny Except for everybody says, wasn't that you in the audience laughing and laughing? And I'm like, yeah, it was me. You got some good <laughs> audience shots. That's a, yeah. Well, hey, you tell me. <laughs> Rose came all the way from the Bay Area to Los Angeles to support, so that meant a lot. And it was awesome. And that was a good show. The yeah, my was dad was in the audience, and my dad, my adopted father's like 89 now. He was like 83, 84 at the time. He, one time they were like, Canada. everyone's laughing. He's kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? And you can't cut that one out. I think I think Scott, the director, did just <laughs> he for, did it uh, on purpose. Huh? <laughs> chuckles, you know. Right? Okay. I don't know if you remember the first time you did a show with us, and we had a studio audience for you. And I think a couple of them didn't speak English. One had a hearing aid, which he didn't have his hearing aid on that day. A couple kids did, did, didn't understand the jokes. Yeah, there was like a, a like Mayan <laughs> guy from Peru, and then there was another guy. Yeah, the, he was like 93, and he, yeah, was, just, yeah. he, was, he was just kind of laughing. We tried. And smiling, yeah. So thank you for bringing a live audience. It's really live. It's today, really alive. So, yeah, you can hear and everything. They are. <laughs> yeah, it's too much. So you do a lot of on the road then, huh? You're always. I'd say road? yeah, I'm probably on the road about 40, 40 weeks a year. You know, yeah, that doesn't probably. mean every day. Like sometimes it's the weekends, sometimes midweek. But you know, this year's been fun. I got to do everything from we did colleges all the way to uh, casinos. Um, I'm going to be going over back to Iraq, doing some shows for the, oh, really? for the military. And, uh, That's right. You did go yeah. over there, huh? Yeah, I cut my hair off last time. That's yeah, right. My hair was longer yeah. than yours. It's back almost where it is now. Yeah. And Mine's we got uh, we got involved with the uh, a, 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 a sergeant. We were kind of just talking with him, and he said, "Hey, uh, things have been kind of you know uh, bad morale here." So we're like, "Oh man, we should do something crazy." So we, we they had a show was on the flatbed, and I set up on this truck, and we put a chair on there, and they had two clippers, and my one buddy uh, Jerry Redwaters on one side, and the sergeant's on the other side, and I'm telling jokes. They shaved my hair off, had a big old fistful wow. of hair. That was funny. Which was fun, <laughs> yeah, they liked it. The Marines were going crazy, but then I forgot, you know, Iraq is like 130 degrees. We were there and like, so my head was just like, ooh. You know, you can't go to the Fallujah Foot Locker and pick up a baseball cap. What well, so. was that experience like being over there? It was sur very surreal because, you know, that you go to the bases and, you know, once in a while we'd hear some explosions and stuff, but it's almost like you're on a college campus because there's like a gym. And there's a big, uh, you know, there's uh, like a relaxed, they could, not a dorm, but yeah, dormitory area and a TV area and computers. But, you know, so it's this, on one hand, there's this whole, like, this traditional, this, like, almost a normal life going on. And then you're, like, in the middle of a war zone. But, wow. uh, it was, but the guy, it's just amazing how much the, uh, the troops, you know, how, how many hours they've been at work. These guys are, like, 18, 17, 18 hours a day. There was duties and responsibilities. and. Met a ton of native guys over there. Just really? Wrote, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, I bet you they were happy to see you, huh? Yeah, we had a good time. Because our tour was actually three of us, and two of us were, were native guys. So that was, uh, they, they weren't they weren't cool. expecting Indians to be uh, entertaining the 101st Cavalry or whatever that was. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah that's kind of That was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? No right? horses, <laughs> oh, just helicopters. Yeah. So, so, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, what an experience. How long were you there? Like 14 days, and the, and the next one wow. will be about the same, I think 12 days. Yeah. And when do you plan on going there? Sometime in next year? Or? March of 2017, yes. Oh, wow. So, wow. so if you watch this uh, rerun in March of 2018, you'll know I got back safely. So that's, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and if we don't have you back on? No. Right. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> well, have a very safe trip. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so what are your big plans? Okay, you're gonna start this uh, series. So yeah, we got this Almost American series. We're excited about that. That will mm -hmm. uh, be taping in April of 2017. And we'll do six episodes for First Nations Experience. Then uh, Hulu also is looking at uh, oh, picking wow. that up. So we'll see where that goes. And then, um, you know, just writing and performing. You know, that's, oh, that's pretty exciting. So it's, it's nice, you know, you, you, you get to do this, get to do this business where you get paid for telling jokes. So you want to make it where it's still fun and doesn't become a business. So yeah. that's always my goal. You know. Oh, that's good. And how long have you been doing it? What, what made you become a comedian? When did you say, okay, I think I'm going to make this a uh, livelihood? Well, I did traffic school. In, remember before oh, it was computers? Right. I think I told you that. I used to do classes yeah. and I'd tell jokes in traffic school. And people say, hey, this guy's pretty funny. One, you should do stand-up comedy. And uh, my original intention, was I was looking for instructors to work for my school. And these, they said, oh, this one guy, uh, said, go talk to such and such in, in Sacramento at the comedy club. And I went there and they said, oh, he's teaching a class. I said, well, maybe you should come talk class. to him. <laughs> what, took his class. Yeah, watch his class. I said, I'm going to take this. That'd be fun. And got up there, and three people laughed out of like ten in the audience. <laughs> so no, and just enough to get me addicted. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I so bet you they were taking they were get tickets just so they could come to your class. Huh? Almost. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> not yeah. that far. <laughs> I'm not that funny. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. pretty good. And yes. how, were you were like an adult at that time? Um, I didn't start comedy till I was in my late thirties. You know, really? I've always been a late bloomer. Yeah. Wow. Didn't walk till I was almost four, didn't ride a bike till I was almost seven, didn't wet the bed till I was almost 12. <laughs> Late <Wow. blooming. laughs> Well, I know you're going to do some stand up for us today. Oh, looking forward and, to it. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it because I know you always have new material and um, our audience is, they've been practicing, you know, they're practicing the wave, they're practicing waving, and they're practicing laughing. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Okay, then we'll go on with the show, and um, nice having you here. Always good to be back. Thanks, Thank Rose. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present Mark Yaffe. Man, it's so great to be here at Native Voice TV. It's been an awesome year for me. I actually just did this giant convention. It's called the National Indian Gaming Association. This is a huge gathering where white people and Indian people get together and figure out how to take more money from Asian people. <laughs> I love Asian food, my favorite Chinese food. I've been to like 41 states and nine countries. Anywhere you go, if there's a town over 500 people, there's at least two Chinese restaurants. Yeah. It's unbelievable. The Chinese people have populated every part of the globe to bring us orange chicken. <laughs> I bet you if we went up to the North Pole, we'd find a Panda Polar Express. <laughs> they even have a Panda Express now on the Navajo Reservation, a window rock, yeah. But it's a little different, though. It's a Navajo style instead of it's a General Sosi's chicken. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was just down in Mexico. I got to do a show in Mazatlan, Mexico, and I was a little nervous, not because I was going to Mexico, but I had to fly into the Mazatlan International Airport. And I don't like flying in any airport where the initials are MIA. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's like being admitted to the DOA Medical Center. <laughs> or attending the LOL School of Law. <laughs> and it's getting very Americanized down there in Mexico. When we were in Mazatlan, I saw they had a Carl's Jr., or Carlos Juniors. Yeah. <laughs> There's an Office Max, an Office Maximos. Yeah. And a big Home Depot, and right across the street from the Home Depot, I saw 20 white guys looking for work. <laughs> So myself, I'm actually uh, part white and part native. I feel guilty and oppressed. <laughs> yeah. I'm not from the reservation. Never met my uh, father. Uh, runs from responsibility. <laughs> yeah. I come from a uh, small fishing village on the Pacific coast. Uh, you might have heard of it. It's called Los Angeles. Yeah. Born in Los Angeles at birth, I weighed 11 pounds, 5 ounces. Worst part was 11 pound head, five ounce body. <laughs> I was a globe on a Q-tip. See all my baby pictures, I'm like. <laughs> but my mom had an easy delivery, because I'm adopted. <laughs> yep, Navajo, adopted by a Mexican mother and a Jewish father. I'm a bargain hunter-gatherer. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I got on the Ancestry.com. I was all excited. I found on the Ancestry.com. I found out on my Navajo site. I found out my grandfather was a medicine man. I'm like, this is awesome. Grandpa's a medicine man. It turns out he's a pharmacist at CVS. <laughs> And people find out you're native, even part, man, they start asking all sorts of questions. I got this the other day, and this guy, oh, Mark, you're Native American. Can you share some ancient tribal wisdom? I'm not even from the reservation. I'm like, uh, ancient tribal wisdom. Yeah, sure. I'm, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> Felt good to get out of the rain. <laughs> and this other guy, after show, he's like, oh, Mark, is it true you Navajos and your troubles, you're guided by outer voices? I'm like, yeah, it's called an on-star navigation system. <laughs> I get bored on the road. I'll start messing with the GPS because you know you can change the voices on the GPS on your navigation on your phone. Yeah, like I, I'll get bored. I put on the British guy the other day. He's all formless. Now entering the motorway. <laughs> the French guy, he's all pissy. Oh, you want to go to Fresno. Why the hell you want to go to Fresno? <laughs> But they added a Nigerian guy. He tripped me out. The Nigerian guy's like, you'll go 3.1 miles. You'll make a right turn into your bank parking lot. You will withdraw $7,500 and mail it to my uncle in Lagos, Nigeria. Of course, play a lot of Indian casinos. And uh, I was out there in Wisconsin. I performed at the Ho-Chunk Tribal Casino of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I'm now an honorary member of the Ho-Chunk tribe because I lost a whole chunk of money. <laughs> They got these celebrity slot machines. You seen these? There's a Michael Jackson slot machine. There's an Elvis Presley slot machine. There's, a, there's even a Britney Spears slot machine. I'm like, man, they need a Dr. Phil slot machine. <laughs> Every time you lose, you'd be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> even if you win, like, you still got a problem. <laughs> that tripped me out. I was leaving the Ho-Chunk Casino, and as I'm coming out of the front of the casino hotel area, the Mayflower moving band came moving up. I'm like, oh, this is going to turn out a little bit different than the first time the Mayflower rolled up on Indians. <laughs> well, we have some beautiful tribal casinos in Indian country, but not all created equal. We got some little rugged ones, too. I was out there in the Midwest. I performed at the Broken Dreams Casino, Pawn Shop, and Fireworks Stand. I knew that was going to be a rough one when they, they sent the casino shell to pick us up at the airport. It was the Head Start van. <laughs> I had to change two diapers. <laughs> I don't want to say this casino was small, but at 6 o'clock they took the blackjack table, flipped it into the buffet table. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were featuring uh, surf and turf, seaweed and crabgrass. <laughs> and after our show, they were advertising cage fights. Cage fights, yeah, it turned out it was two cashiers wrestling in the change booth. <laughs> I bet on the little chubby girl. She kicked that dude's butt. <laughs> Some of our Indian casinos actually serve Thanksgiving dinner. That's, that sounds like a little bit of a setup there, white people. <laughs> You'll be right in the middle of your meal like, whoo, I think they roofied the turkey gravy. Wow. <laughs> I feel the sudden urge to go spend the kids' uh, college money at the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Oh, I like the, I like the, uh, the Thanksgiving only because I think we can commemorate some things that should happen. Look, we need Native American reenactments. We need a first Indian Thanksgiving reenactment. We know it's a myth. It wasn't one meal. But I think every Thanksgiving, Walmart should have Native grievers, every Walmart in the country, right? <laughs> Indians helping confused, strangely dressed people find turkey and squash. <laughs> I do the Thanksgiving, though. I eat the turkey, and I watch the football. That's my two contributions. And, and two years ago on Thanksgiving, the Redskins actually beat the Cowboys. <laughs> that has not happened a lot in the last 200 years, so we'll take that one. Yeah. And this knucklehead, this Redskin owner, vows he will never change the name of the team. He says he wants to honor Native Americans. Really, sir, you want to honor Native Americans? Have a winning season, will you please? <laughs> They've had like one in the last 23 years. The Redskins have been so bad for so long, the Indian on the side of the Redskin helmet should have a tear coming down his cheek. <laughs> yeah, but like a lot of natives, uh, I did lose my land and home to the white man. In my case, it was my ex-wife's divorce attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Second worst treaty ever. <laughs> 
And I was married 22 years because neither one of us wanted custody of the kids. <laughs> yeah, my kids were bad kids. We, we, we didn't put them in public school. We homeschooled them so you wouldn't contaminate the public school kids. Wow. <laughs> but you know what, though? This homeschool worked out great. One of my kids was student of the month every time. <laughs> And they had to earn their grades, too. I'm like, you want to be on that honor roll? You better get your butt out there and mow that lawn. <laughs> then get over to the home ec room, get daddy another beer. I'll be in the teacher's lounge watching TV. <laughs> yeah, divorce is tough, though, because you lose half your stuff when you get divorced. My Arapaho buddy, Ron Two Horse, got divorced. Now he's just Ron Horse. <laughs> Tough, man, I was married 22 years. We had a mixed marriage. And my ex-wife, paranoid schizophrenic, I'm obsessive compulsive. <laughs> well, she'd invite over imaginary friends. I'd make them take off their shoes before they came in my house. <laughs> and she remarried after one year, after we got divorced. Within a year, that's kind of quick. But she didn't go for the newer, younger model. She married a 67-year-old drunk, disabled diabetic. <laughs> it's not even a sugar daddy, he's an insulin uncle. <laughs> Now I'm back in the dating pool. I didn't know how to swim the first time. I suck at dating. Right? I've tried all the dating websites, eHarmony, Match.com, Stalker.net, Farmers.org. I even tried the Indian dating websites. Yeah, we got uh, um, eSnag, yeah. TPCreeper.com, NotYourCousin.net. Weird is now my daughters are in their 20s, so I'm dating the same time as my daughters. That's just weird. My one daughter always had awkward relationships. Her first boyfriend when she was 15, Jehovah Witness boy. Oh, yeah. No. I warned her not to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> but my parents, man, they've been in love for 63 years. My, my they celebrated their 63rd wedding anniversary. Yeah. And they say, till death do us part. I'm like, I don't know. I think my parents parted when they got the second cable box. <laughs> I was at their house. They were in separate rooms watching the same show at the same time. Oh, man. And they're, and they're great people, but you've got to monitor your elders with the medication. The seniors have all the good drugs. My mom takes five pills. Just remember to take her other ten pills. They have a pill for everything. They have a pill for restless leg syndrome. I'm like, Mom, you got restless legs. You need to take a pill. Take a walk. <laughs> Try some grass dancing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not ready to get old. I'm getting too old, though. I'm too old to party now. I, I just turned 40 like 14 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, party like it's 1999. Now I'm peeing like I'm turning 99. <laughs> I used to be able to drink whatever I wanted to, eat whatever I wanted to. Now I look at spicy food, I get gassy. <laughs> And you don't care, when you're in your 20s, you were holding a fart like Fort Knox. Now me, I'm ripping them like Looney Tunes. <laughs> it's like one false move. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the third leading cause of global warming. <laughs> I miss the old days. We had fun growing up. It was a different era, though. If you grew up in the 1900s, man, the parents, and it was a different time. They, we were raised on violence, right? even our cereal, violent. Kicks, sugar smacks, kaboom. <laughs> the parents could hit us, the aunts, the uncles, the teachers, the neighbors. I think the mailman took a couple swings at me. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, not only they hit us, they could hit us with our own toys. <laughs> we can't do that to our kids. Number one, CPS. <clears throat> Number two, we're not wasting a perfectly good $300 Xbox. <laughs> Back in the day, we had no Xbox, we had cardboard box. Yeah. There was no Wii, it was just us. <laughs> and there was no ADD either, because we had to play in the street. That'll make you pay attention. <laughs> That's awesome. I love going around doing this job, man. We get to represent Indians. And most people aren't aware. They don't know a lot about our history. They, they don't realize Native Americans, we're only 1% of the population, 1%. I believe at one time we were like 100% of the population, yeah. right? We're coming back though, we're, we're representing. We go places, 
But the thing is, you go places, people don't even know how to interact. That's how bad it is. So we had some awkward moment uh, a couple months ago. My buddies and I are in Omaha, Nebraska doing a show, the housekeeping at the hotel we're staying at. Heard there's some native guys at the hotel. They wanted to bond with us. They weren't quite sure how to make the approach. My housekeeper came knocking at my door. 6.30 in the morning, I get this knock on my door. I get this. Hey, thank you. You guys have been awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Wasn't that a great show? Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on Native Voice TV. Like us on Facebook. See you next week.